Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Control of oral fluids to maintain a clear and clean field of operation is an essential part of sit-down forehanded dentistry. Good technique and the use of the high-velocity evacuator will eliminate the need for the cuspidor. It also provides improved visibility through elimination of the oral fluids in the field of operation and through retraction of soft tissues using the evacuator tip. Let's take a look at high-velocity versus low-velocity evacuation. Low-velocity removes small volumes of fluid slowly and it must be immersed to accomplish evacuation. High velocity removes mass volumes of fluid at an accelerated rate and does not have to be immersed in the fluids. The evacuator should be parallel and not tipped. One important thing to remember in selecting an evacuator tip is the design. Here we will demonstrate the universal suction tip. It is important to identify the two ends of the evacuator tip placing the instrument so that the outside of the bend is on top. The two ends can be identified by these bevels. End A slopes toward the outside of the bend and is used in the posterior areas. End B slopes toward the inside of the bend and is used in the anterior areas. In positioning the evacuator tip, there are five important rules to remember. Hold the tip with the thumb to nose grasp. With this grasp, the assistant can rotate the tip easily and can maintain control. Another grasp, which can be easily manipulated, is the modified pen grasp. Held like a pen, the evacuator is grasped with the thumb and the first and second fingers where the tip connects with the hose. Position the tip before the handpiece. This will allow freedom of movement for the operator. Position the tip slightly distal to the tooth being prepared. In this placement, the operator's access is not obstructed. The tip opening parallel with a buckle or lingual surface, depending on the area being restored. Edge of the tip should be even with the occlusal surface. This will evacuate fluids without actually bringing the tip into contact with the fluids. Let's repeat those rules again for review. First, hold the suction with the thumb to nose or modified pen grasp. Position the tip before the handpiece. Position the tip distally to the tooth being prepared. The tip opening should be parallel with a buckle or lingual surface. The edge of the tip should be even with the occlusal surface. The oral evacuator can serve as a retractor for the cheek, tongue, or lip when the rubber dam is not applied. A good retraction technique is essential for functional forehanded dentistry. The operator and assistant both aid in retraction techniques. Let's observe an operator and assistant using these techniques. Starting with end A in the maxillary right, the tip is placed at the palatal aspect of the tooth being prepared, while the operator holds the mouth mirror with his left hand. Note how the air water syringe is held in the assistant's left hand to keep the mirror clean and free of debris by periodically blowing air across the surface of the mirror. In the maxillary left, the tip is placed at the buccal aspect of the teeth. The operator holds the mouth mirror with his left hand. The tip is positioned behind the mirror to allow the operator freedom of movement. Still using end A of the suction tip, we will go to the mandibular for tip placement. 
In the lower right, the suction tip is placed lingual to the operative area. The assistant retracts the tongue on the lingual side. The operator retracts the cheek with a mouth mirror. In the lower left, the assistant positions the suction tip to the buckle of the tooth being restored. The operator may use a mirror to retract the tongue if necessary. An additional mirror may be used by the assistant to retract the cheek. Now we will show how NB is used for anterior areas. In the mandibular, the evacuator tip is placed from the lingual, which also retracts the tongue. The operator retracts the lip with his fingers and establishes a finger rest. The reverse would be the evacuator tip is positioned to the labial of the teeth. It may or may not be necessary for the assistant to retract the lip with her fingers. The operator will use a mirror to retract the tongue. It has been shown here how the evacuator can be used as a retractor as well as an evacuator when used properly. The assistant used the thumb to nose grasp in all areas. and In all cases, the tip was placed before the handpiece. It was also placed distal and parallel to the tooth being restored and did not obstruct the operator's view. There are various types of evacuator tips available. First, the surgical tip. It's narrow with a small opening. It is used primarily in surgical procedures and allows the assistant access to the surgical field. Next, the universal, which has just been demonstrated and is used during most restorative procedures. Third, the flange, which is a modification of the universal tip. The benefit of this is the added retraction provided by the flange. Fourth is the plastic. This is discarded after each use. However, because of its flexibility, it is not as effective as a retractor. The spoon evacuator. This is a plastic version of the flange and is particularly useful in retraction of the tongue. Last, the Lorvik, which has a right angle adapter and can be used on either end depending on the area being restored. And this is also a disposable tip. The evacuator to be used is left to the discretion of the dental assistant. Effective oral evacuation is one of the most important skills to be mastered by the assistant since it is one of the key elements in sit-down forehanded dentistry. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.